Hey everybody, this is Steven from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews, and I'm almost in this week. I know, I've been uh, just busy and stuff lately. It's just kind of crazy. Um, I think you all know how it gets out there, you know, so, uh, so, but anyways, uh, I, I have been good. Uh, here you go, John. I have got books up behind me. Um, mostly they're the, uh, the Joe Hill, uh, the Hill, ha uh, Hill House comics, uh, from DC, but I also want to include the uh, newest Ed Brubaker, uh, Sean Phillips uh, book that's really, really good. He's, uh, you know, to get you in the mood for uh, October. It's October for Halloween, uh, the greatest holiday of all time. Uh, so hopefully that'll get you. Uh, so we have uh, The Dollhouse Family, Plunge, uh, The Lolo Woods, uh, House of the Unholy, uh, Daphne Byrne, and we have Basketful of Heads. Uh, I really enjoyed the uh, Hill House comics. And, uh, you know, once again, with uh, Brew Baker and Phillips, uh, those are always a win. So definitely uh, check those out. So let's get to this week's uh, reviews. First up, we have Godzilla, the original Marvel Years Omnibus, uh, written by Doug Munch, uh, with artwork by Herb Trempe and Tom Sutton. Now, this reprints the entire 24 issue run uh, from back in the uh, 70s. Um, and, you know, I always kind of wondered why they were never reprinted, uh, especially, you know, cause I know that like IDW has, uh, does a lot of the, uh, Godzilla comics, but the, uh, upon rereading this, uh, I can totally understand why, because it's Godzilla is set in the Marvel universe. So there's no way for anybody but Marvel to reprint this. Uh, it includes the champions, uh, fantastic four, uh, it pretty much, I think everybody mostly in the Marvel universe at a point. Uh, but it's really, uh, though, let's see, there's the Avengers there in, uh, issue 23. Um, it, it's, you know, it's surprisingly, uh, you know, for a character that doesn't really talk or anything, Munch did a really good job of, you know, coming up with stories, uh, you know, in its two year run. Um, and of course, Herb Trempe, uh, you know, he was he was always the go-to uh, solid artist for a book. Um, you know, his biggest thing he ever did, he did draw the uh, issue 181, 80 and 81 of The Incredible Hulk, which is the first appearance of Wolverine. And so he was just, a, you know, he was just one of those, you know, solid, he could turn in the book on time and everything. Uh, there were a couple issues that Tom Sutton did uh, the artwork on. Uh, and you know, it, it still had a, a similar look, you know, he kept in, in Trempe's style. Um, you know, they're not, not mind numbingly the most brilliant comics you're ever going to read, but surprisingly they're, there's, they hold up pretty well for, for its age. And once again, you know, trying to do, you know, a monthly book with Godzilla, just basically destroying stuff is not an easy task. So, um, you know, it's, for me, it's definitely a nostalgia trip. I remember picking, uh, the, these, uh, a lot of these issues up on the newsstand when it originally came out. Yes, it's dating me. Yes, I'm that old. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's nice to have, you know, a, a reprint of all 24 issues because, uh, the first, you know, probably first five, six issues are pretty easy to, uh, to to find uh even still today uh you know they don't go for a whole lot of money but uh as as the book went on trying to find the last few issues is nearly impossible because the you know the print runs were not you know super huge at that point but um you know and it's yeah it's a little pricey omnibus it's 100 bucks but you know once again you get all 24 issues so um, I think, you know, for, for people looking for the nostalgia of the book and, you know, for God, you know, uh, Godzilla fans, I think it's worth checking out. Like I said, it's a little on the pricey side, but worth, worth checking out. Uh, so now with the regular comics, uh, first up, we have absolute power. Number four written by Mark Wade with artwork by Dan Mora. Uh, so this finishes it. So basically, uh, the heroes have, have gotten back together. They don't, they don't have their powers. They go to Gamora Island for the final showdown with Amanda Waller and her Amazo robots and and uh, Failsafe and uh, uh, the female Brainiac. And so really what this what is kind of coming out of this, and we'll get to that in a minute, um, is really 
uh, you know, big surprise, the heroes get their their powers back. Um, it doesn't look like there's been any, you know, crisis mass wholesaling of like killing people. Um, there are a couple casualties, but nothing too too amazing. The big thing is that uh, this seems to have closed for the moment, closed off the multiverse. So. Um, there's that, and I'm sure there's still, you know, there's still going to be multiverse stories here and there, maybe. But for right now, it's closed off. And, um, you know, the other thing is is uh, what what they've done to Amanda Waller, uh, which I will not spoil. Um, it, it's been actually a pretty pretty decent and uh, you know uh, event comic. Having it only four issues is a big help. For the most part, I don't think you needed to read the tie-ins. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I don't think there was a huge, you know, you didn't miss much by just getting the main absolute story. Um, so so I, I think overall it's events. Uh, you know, I don't think it's like a big wholesale change in some respects to the DC universe. Really the big change is the 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 somewhat split in that you're going to have the regular DC line which is going to continue with the current books and current continuity and then there is the uh absolute universe where it's new takes on uh the heroes which we'll kind of get to in a minute but but overall I think I I've been you know pretty pretty fairly impressed with absolute power I think Wade and Mora you know Mora's artwork is always uh good and of course Mark Wade is like the DC and enc walking DC encyclopedia so who better to like you know really do this you know whole thing is than than Mark Wade so I think it's it's it, it's it's it was a good series and we'll kind of see what comes out of it so that leads us into next up uh all in special number one okay so there's two stories it's a flip book so you have the Alpha story written by Joshua Williamson and Scott Snyder with artwork by Daniel Sampierre. And then you have the other side, which is Omega, written by Scott Snyder and Joshua Williamson with artwork by Wes Craig. So, so here's, I think the, you know, there is no right or wrong order to read. You can read one or the other. I read the Alpha, which uh, part first, which is really the aftermath of absolute power. The Justice League uh, is now going to kick into the Justice League Unlimited. And uh, there's a new watchtower. And it's a huge watchtower where pretty much almost any hero can show up in. So that's that's kind of the premise there. And so while they're, you know, they're building it and everything and all the heroes are showing up, Darkseid shows up and it's kind of an amalgamation of Darkseid and the Spectre. So there's that storyline that's going to go, you know, in theoretically into the regular DC universe. Then on the flip side, you have the Omega story that is actually how... Um, dark side you know came about how he met up how he found the specter and how you know what his plans are and the 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 omega side really introduces the absolute universe where we have different takes on superman batman and wonder woman that are coming out uh you know fairly soon uh, the absolute batman is going to be the first one i believe that's next week uh when that hits and so we'll kind of see you know what those are more of like setting in their own continuity they're they're really in some ways set up for like newer readers uh but you know i think regular comic readers are going to be you know it'll be interesting to see where where all those books land but so far the early reviews have been quite good so we'll see um on the Alpha story, uh, Sam Pierre's artwork is always, he's the regular artist on Wonder Woman. Um, and he's just really fantastic. He, he knows how to draw big crowd scenes, which is always good. And there's a lot of dialogue. And then, of course, when you get to the, the fight with uh, Darkseid, you know, he does a great job. And then on the flip side, I was really happy to see uh, Wes Craig's artwork. Uh, he's been working on his creator-owned book, Kaya, which is really, if you haven't been buying Kaya, definitely just run out and buy the trade paperback. That book is amazing. And he was really perfect for the, the really the dark side uh, set up uh, to the uh, Omega universe. And, um, or I should say absolute uh, universe. 
And, it, you know, it was just really, you know, his style really fit that. I was really, really happy. And honestly, it's a really good deal. It's it's basically you're getting two books for four, uh, $5. So uh, DC's definitely uh, giving you a pretty good deal on this book. And I think it's I think it's worth checking out, uh, you know, uh, this week for sure. Uh, it's, it's it, For five bucks, it's worth a buy. And it's really setting up where DC is going to go uh, in the future with both regular series and absolute series so i think it's well worth checking out uh next up we have hyde street number one written by jeff johns with pencils by ivan riaz and inks by danny mickey uh so <laughs> really uh it's very easy to say that this is very twilight zone inspired for sure and what it is is if you basically end up on hyde street not so much that you've done something wrong but uh, the, in a certain way, it's kind of like hell. Uh, that's the way I viewed it. And so what it is, is they're, they're really the main character we're introduced to is Mr. X-Ray. And um, one of the other characters that we're introduced first in this issue is Pranky. And it seems to be if you end up on Hyde Street that you know you you've done something bad and and there's consequences to it but there but what it is is uh there's kind of a scoreboard on how many souls are collected and right now uh pranky is is way ahead of the team um this is definitely kind of a setup issue um i like a lot i like the concept of of what it's doing here it's just that it's really just we're seeing the concept so we're not i'm not quite sure where ultimately the story's going to go. Obviously, it's centering on Mr. X, and we'll kind of we learn a bit, a little bit about his history and everything. Uh, we don't know much about Pranky except for he's just an evil little demon child. Um, but but I think there's definitely uh, uh, some good ideas here. Uh, we'll kind of have to see where John's you know kind of takes it from there. And of course, Ivan Riaz's artwork is really it's a gorgeous looking book. Um, we'll kind of see. There's a special coming out, uh, Devour. Uh, that is, uh, you know, going to be a one shot that's coming out, I guess, fairly soon. So that that is part of the Hyde Street story. So we'll kind of see where that lands. But overall, I think I think it was OK. It's very like I said, it's very much Twilight Zone for sure. Uh, but we'll kind of see where it goes from, you know, after this first issue and see what the second issue is like. Uh, next up, we have The Creeping Below, number one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Written by Brian Azilio. <clears throat> Excuse me with artwork by Vanessa Del Rey. Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. Um, so the ba what the basic premise is here is Val's a photographer. You know, she normally just shoots like, you know, food and stuff like that for uh, a cooking magazine. But she's in Oslo for this uh, metal, uh, metal festival. Uh, and then she runs into this one band, the Old Gods of Norse Mythology. And so what it is, she hooks up with them. They end up taking her to the woods. And then they find she finds out why they take her there. Uh, she's being sacrificed. Now, we don't know why and, and what happens. But we do know that uh, she wakes up. And there's obviously been a time shift where she's, uh, you know, there's new, you know, there's a, a candle set up and stuff where she's missing. Um, and why she's, you know, kind of, is she a ghost? Is she come back to life? I mean, we don't know. Um, I, I think there's an interesting premise here, but this first issue was just a little on the slow side. Um, I like a lot of the concepts. It just seemed like it really, there was, it was really exposition heavy, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but when in a first issue, it's kind of a tough to make a call on a book that really is just steeped in exposition for its first issue. So, you know, I, I think I like the premise. Uh, Vanessa Del Rey's artwork is really, really just spectacular. It's really perfect for this. You know, it's kind of a horror book. Um, I just, it's really too early to make a call on it. I think it's interesting. It's got good concepts, so we'll kind of have to see where it goes from there. So, little on the iffy side on that. It's, not, it's certainly not bad. It's just, like I said, it's hard to see what is going to happen. It's really going to, a book like this is definitely going to, it's going to key on the, the second issue. Uh, next up, we have DC Horror Presents Creature Commandos number one, written by David uh, Dashmalin, uh with artwork by Jesus Hervez. 
Now, obviously, this is, uh, you know, kind of coming out because there's going to be the animated creature uh, Commandos animated series is coming out. Uh, so what this is, is Matthew Shreve is is the government liaison to to uh, run the Creature Commando division. So we have Vincent Velcro, who's a vampire. We have Wanda, who's a werewolf. Uh, Mina is a mind reader. And Lucky is Frankenstein, and basically this is a this is a setup, uh, you know, for you know where where uh, Matthew gets you know kind of gets the team together, and you know we but we do know that there's kind of an uh, another kind of I guess you could say creature commando division somewhere else, and there's a surprise at the end of a DC a villain uh, that was kind of a bit of a surprise, so we'll kind of see where this goes. You know, this is definitely, you know, a first issue setup. Um, uh, Hervez's artwork is really nice. It really fits the kind of, you know, kind of gritty uh, theory of, you know, and style of the story. Uh, uh, Dash Malin's, uh, you know, script is really good. It's a first issue. Um, but, you know, don't expect anything, you know, amazing to happen in the first issue because it's all set up for the, you know, the mini series going forward. So we'll kind of see where it goes. I liked the setup. I like, you know, kind of the setup of the characters. We'll see what he's actually going to, you know, what they're going to do with, with the story from here. I think it's a decent, you know, first issue, you know, for a setup, but don't, you know, it's really, you know, once again, this is another book that's really going to hinge on the second issue going forward to see where it goes. Uh, next up, we have Skin Police, number one, written by Jordan Thomas, with artwork by Daniel Gett. Uh, so what this is, it takes place in 2042, where uh, fertility levels are really low, and clones have been made somewhat illegally. And what is happening is there a lot of the clones are unstable, and three out of four of them basically go nuts and go crazy. And so what it is is the United, United Nations of Europe set up a, uh, basically the skin police to go after clones. And so there's kind of these telltale signs that they, you know, when they go crazy, it starts off that there is a clone on the, on a plane. He goes crazy because he, he sees people, you know, he, by going crazy, he sees people's demons and he starts killing them. And so uh, this, this, um, so what it is, is Brisson Eckes is a skin police. He's like kind of the top dog. And he goes on the plane to, you know, stop the clone. And it's really setting up, there's, there's you know, they're setting up, he gets a new partner in the book. And it, it, it was really interesting. I like the concept and everything. Um, has a little bit of, you know, kind of Logan's run-ish, you know, where the, the, the Sandman are, you know, kind of looking for, for the clones, or, you know, in this case, clones. Um, uh, the artwork, really, the artwork by Gad is really just spectacular. It's a really good-looking book. Um, I think Thomas is, uh, you know, he's got a good concept here. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of see, you know, I mean, there's definitely a lot of genre mashing. There's, there's Logan's run, there's kind of Blade Runner in there and everything, uh, you know, all those kind of theories of, you know, kind of the police going after, uh, definitely, you know, obviously Blade Runner inspired uh, at the same time, but we'll kind of see, see where it goes. Uh, but, but I did like the first issue. I think it has a good, fairly decent concept, uh, um, that's not original, but well, you know, kind of well done. And like I said, Getz artwork is really, really amazing. So I think it's worth checking out this week. Uh, next up, we have Plastic Man No More, number two, written by Christopher Cantwell, with out artwork by Alex Linz and Jason Edgar. Now, I do want to apologize uh, to Jason uh, Edgar uh, f when I did the review of the first issue. He does like the little, uh, he, like the flashbacks. Originally, I thought it was Alex Lynn who did, just did different styles, but it's actually Jacob Edgar that uh, does uh, kind of the cartoony uh, style, you know, more of the flashback sequences uh, where Lynn does the, the main artwork. Um, so what it is, is uh, in the first issue, uh, Eel O'Brien, who is Plastic Man, uh, got zapped by this uh, thing, uh, this ray that is kind of making his cells unstable. So he's he's kind of falling apart, basically. So he goes to a doctor and the doctor says, well, there's a possibility that if you, you know, go use a fusion bomb on yourself, 
it might fix, it might reverse the thing. So he's like, okay, well, where do you get a fusion bomb? So he finds out that uh, uranium from the uh, metal men has been kidnapped. And so he convinces the metal men to go with him to rescue uranium, but he's going to rescue uranium so he can turn him into a bomb and help save himself. Uh, so there's that going on, but there's also the story of he has a son and his son has his powers. And so he's, he's wanting to make sure that he, he can, you know, he thinks it is, he, something's going to happen to his son. The same, maybe the same thing that's happening to him. So he's trying to reconnect with his son and his son and his wife really don't want to have anything to do with him. Uh, so there's kind of that subplot going on, which is really interesting. Um, I really like the first issue, and I think the second issue does a really good job. The nice thing I like about this, it's a black label book, but it's not so much that it's super dark or anything, because it definitely can't well get the, you know, the humor of Plastic Man, because he's kind of a goofball. And so that that definitely shines through very much. And of course, you know, he does use Woozy Winks, which is kind of his partner, which is really nice to see that he's definitely leaning on the history of Plastic Man. Um, and like I said, Lynn's and, and Edgar's artwork is really spectacular. I really like the look of this, the, the visuals on this book. Great story. Um, it has quite a shocking ending, so we'll kind of see where it goes. But I'm really digging this. Uh, definitely well worth picking up. Uh, next up, we have Sfinguli Special Number 2, 45th Anniversary Halloween Boonanza. So now there's multiple stories here. We have Day of the Doorbell Demons. Uh, written by Rich Cause, uh, Chris Falker, and Jim Roche, with artwork by Bill Morrison and Scott Shaw. And uh, nost the next story is uh, Nostalgia Ferratu, Highway to the Stranger Zone, uh, written by Bill uh, Leff, with artwork by Joe Stanton. And then there's Gwen Gooley, uh, written by Sarah Palmer, with artwork by Dan Parent. And then the final story is Ignat Malvato Frankenstein, written by uh, Scott Guider, with artwork by Liam M.G. Now, this uh, book ties in because every every Halloween, uh, uh, Svengulli, who's on MeTV, which is an over-air uh, um, uh, channel or network, um, he has his uh, Halloween Bonanza where he shows movies and series and stuff to get you in the mood for Halloween. So what it is, is uh, they've kind of written these stories for each one of the characters uh, that uh, come to the Halloween uh, Bonanza. And, you know, once again, I think you have to be, you have to be a bit of a fan of Svengooli to, to really enjoy, you know, a lot of the, you know, humor and stuff. Uh, you know, Svengooli is definitely inspired by like Elvira and, and those type of uh, horror movie host. Um, Svengooli has been around for quite a while. Uh, the nice thing about uh, in here, there is a whole thing about how, you know, kind of the history of Svengooli and stuff like that. So they do, you know, explain if you don't quite know the history, maybe you just watch the Svengooli. Um, but, you know, once, you know, if you're a fan of Svengooli, this is definitely kind of a just a great tongue in cheek, neat little. Uh, you know, fun little stories. Um, the artwork's really just great. I mean, I'm huge fans of Bill Morrison and Scott Shaw. Um, and they do a really great job on the, you know, the main story. And of course, Dan Parent, um, you know, he, he's he's the Archie guy. Uh, Joe Stanton is really, I'm a big fan. Joe Stanton has done artwork and, and comics for years. So it was really nice to see him do a story in this. I, I don't see his artwork as, as much today, which is kind of a really shame because he's still a really great artist. And then, um, you know, Liam MG for the final story does, you know, they're all bit on the cartoony style, which is really perfect for, for this. Um, it's, it's a fun book. I mean, like I said, you definitely have to be a fan of Spinguli, but if you are, it's, it's well worth picking up. I mean, yeah, it's a little pricey $8, but the one thing I did like is that it does have a cardstock cover, but the actual comic is like news, you know, basically newsprint, which is definitely really cool, you know, for the old school vibe of, you know, what they're trying to get across in the comic. And it's just a fun time. And I, I think it's nice to have just a fun little comic that doesn't try to be more than it is. And that's, that's I think, why it works so well. So 
Um, for, uh, for definitely Svengoolie fans, definitely well worth picking up. And finally this week, we have Batman in Scooby-Doo Mysteries number 10, uh, written by Amanda Diebert with artwork by uh, Erich Owen. Uh, so what this is, is, you know, it's the typical, you know, Scooby gang and, and Batman teaming up. Uh, this issue's um, quote unquote villain is, uh, or team up with this is Harley Quinn. Uh, she kind of helps them with the mystery and stuff. And as I've always said, this is just a fun book. Uh, it's a great all ages book. If, I mean, if you're a fan of Batman, if you're a fan of Scooby-Doo, uh, you can't really, you know, do, do much better than this. Uh, Debert writes a fun little story. You know, they're simple, but uh, they're one and done stories. And uh, Owen's artwork definitely captures the animated style of both of them. Um, it's just a really fun book. I really love these books to death. Um, I like how they uh, they incorporate, you know, like like you know, Batman villains into it. And they, uh, it, it's just it's just a blast. I mean, you know, it's just simple fun. Uh, like I said, it's a great all ages book. It's something that you can read. You can give to kids. Uh, it, it's just kind of perfect in a lot of ways. Uh, I love it to death, and it's always a treat every month to just read a fun, simple little story, uh, you know, with with uh, Batman and the Scooby Gang. So uh, always worth buying every month. Uh, that's going to do it. It's a pretty small week this week. Um, as always, public service announcement, I get all my comics at Pulp Fiction Comics, Long Beach, California. Uh, Ryan Skinner, the owner, runs a really great store. Uh, it, check his socials. He's got some signings coming up uh, for the month of October. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. I don't know that he does Twitter too much anymore. I refuse to call it X. Uh, but but Instagram and Facebook, they have a Facebook page for both the store and, and a group. Uh, so, and, uh, Annie, Wendy, uh, are at the store. They're great. Uh, they have a great selection of comics. Uh, it's really, if you're in the Long Beach, uh, California area, definitely check it out. Um, and as always, we end our show with be kind, be kind to each other and be kind to yourself. Um, I know things in the world are kind of crazy right now. There's, you know, there was the hurricane and, and just all sorts of, you know, stuff going on in the world, but just, you know, being kind to others is really important right now. It's just, it's not the big things you do. It's the little things you do that really can make someone's day and really, uh, take care of yourself. Um, like I said, uh, you know, physically and mentally right now, it's really tough on a lot of people for various different reasons, but being kind to yourself is, is really a good thing. Just take some time, just, just, you know, take deep breaths and just do something simple. You know, watch a movie, play a video game, read comics. Uh, just, you know, sometimes just taking your mind off of, uh, off of things, you know, in the world, in your life are really can make a big difference in yourself. And like I said, definitely be kind to others because, um, you know, it's just, it's just a good thing to do. Uh, it helps, you know, it helps spirits of yourself and it helps spirits of others. So definitely be kind. Uh, that's going to do it this week. Thanks for watching. It's just kind of a small week, so we'll see. Uh, next week, we'll, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure Absolute Batman's uh, coming out, so we'll we'll kick it off with DC's All In initiative, uh, and uh, we'll see. There's a lot of exciting stuff, I think, coming out of DC, so I'm very excited about that. I'm kind of a DC kid, but uh, definitely enjoy all comics. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, uh, please like and share our, our videos and our reviews. Uh, comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. We've gotten some new subscribers. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll do it again next week. Uh, this is Stephen from PopCultureMaven.com signing off. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.